card delinquencies and repossessions at an all-time high and yeah it actually matters how old you are because statistically it really is different now we have to talk about even though we've seen a leveling of car prices in the end of the fourth quarter of 2023 and we've seen interest level off we've seen inflation level off and we've seen car purchasing still continue to climb the fact remains is look right look left chances are one of those people is going to lose their car this year yeah that's a big probability and we want to talk about that a new report by the federal reserve bank of new york center for microeconomic data released here this last week actually said the findings even with inflation dropping down like we've seen in the last short little while americans are still feeling the wallet squeeze yeah, there's been a rise in delinquencies, signals that there's a financial stress across the country. And this all falls on the back of lower income earners as well as younger buyers, unfortunately. And the economic research advisor at New York Fed actually said in a press release, when in fact it comes to car loans specifically, high interest rates have played a significant role in the fact that we're seeing a vast increase in delinquencies across the industry. And as a result, many people have found it more and more and more difficult to keep up with their monthly car payments and fell themselves underwater even further due to the fact that depreciation is finally setting in, used car market isn't quite as strong, so the resale is weaker, but many of these people bought these cars at an all-time high price when they purchased them new and now find themselves underwater, short on loan payment cash, and outright difficulty in prioritizing where their next dollar goes, whether it's a loaf of bread, whether it's a roof over their head, or whether it's the next car payment. So as of the fourth quarter of 2023, we saw about a $17.5 trillion household debt just developed. And this figure is actually up $3.5 trillion since 2019. In other words, before that big day. Credit card balances went up by about 4.6% up to $1.13 trillion. While the car loan balances grew by a whopping $12 billion to about $1.61 trillion. And so you can see the writing on the wall. The trend is nowhere but upwards in terms of delinquencies as people have taken on vast amount of more debt, both their car, their housing, as housing costs are going up, the loaf of bread is going up, and everything is going up in cost. And as I say, statistically, your age literally dictates whether or not you're going to be into a place of delinquency. As a matter of fact, in the fourth quarter of 2023, baby boomers saw about 4.8% sail on over into the delinquency side of the table. Gen X actually saw about 7% swing over to delinquencies. Millennials at 9.6% and Gen Z's are almost 12% have gone to delinquency and often that ends in a repossession if you're not quick enough to get to your bank. And overall about 3.1% of outstanding debt became delinquent as of December 2023. And rates were especially high for credit card and auto loan debt. Sadly people were getting into hawk both for their cars and they were purchasing large items and a lot of cases credit cards were just used to pay for food as we all know that food prices have gone through the roof. So throughout 2023, about eight and a half percent of credit card balances, and even sadly enough, 7.7% .7 of auto loan all wound up in a delinquency or transition to delinquency and often meant repossessions, taking over, taking a lot of those assets back. And unfortunately, people found themselves ducking, hiding, watching for the repo man and actually trying to stay under the radar. But the reality is a lot of people lost their shirts in 2023. And as already mentioned, unfortunately, subprime buyers, low income earners, as well as some of the younger buyers in general, just had a harder time. They haven't had as much time to generate savings. They generally don't have the savings. And so if they miss a payment, often it's one or two payments and they're up against the wall. And sadly, it's just a sad, heartbreaking scenario that a lot of people are faced with this year. So as a little bit of a comparison, people that had what you'd consider living a relatively lower standard of life and people that had generally a lower income zip code, they saw about 12.9% of those people saw their vehicles going through into a delinquency state. Whereas a point of contrast, when you look at higher income earners, people that generally are making often over six figures and they're doing particularly well for themselves, they're living in higher zip code income earner type neighborhoods, those were actually seeing about 4.6% transition over to delinquencies. They just happen to buy more expensive cars, but they're all subject to potential repossessions, unfortunately, as well. From a bank's perspective, loans that were taken out for cars in 2022 and 2023 are generally performing a lot worse than they have in previous years. And the majority of that comes down to the escalating prices of cars. Of course, a lot of people were grossly overpaying. Of course, MSRP were driving up drastically by a lot of manufacturers, and they seem to have taken advantage of a lot of consumers. 
And even though they use justifications like, oh, supply chain shortages and lack of inventory, just meant that people felt a little more pushed and rushed. And they had this feeling that there's, if they didn't buy the car, somebody else would. And there was often competition for the same vehicle. So it drove prices up. We can't forget about elevating interest rates, which interest rates were climbing simply because we saw inflationary changes and inflation in general meant the overall cost of living increased. So while they were paying more for cars, they were paying more for interest rates, they were paying more for their house or the rent, for food, everything. Key reason why in fact we're starting to see some of these negative changes in the market and people going underground or underwater on a lot of their loan payments. So Fed's actually also noted that while auto loan origination prices have slightly fallen in recent quarters, following car prices in general, monthly car payments are still on the rise. So in December, the US Bureau of Statistics actually claims that the inflation rate for new vehicles lowered down to about 1%, clearly showing that there's a need to drop some interest rates. Now, when you compare that inflationary rates from back in 2022 of December, the end of year, as opposed to that 1%, it was about 5.9% clearly a huge differential and unfortunately that was the peak of the buying time and a lot of people got sucked in and paid for their cars top dollar at highest interest rates even possible if you're a subprime borrower there was people paying interest rates of 20 to 22 percent even a 10 to 15 percent interest rate was not uncommon and honestly unless you're even a prime buyer you often still found significantly higher interest rates than that might have been used to for example six or seven or eight nine percent and so unfortunately this pattern between the origination amount and the monthly payment over the last year can all be explained by the interest rates and the very increase that we've seen in the auto loan sector. And even though we've seen those significant drops in the auto industry and we've seen some of these numbers drop, clearly there's a trigger that should have activated. But sadly, the feds announced a couple of weeks ago that they would basically lock in those prices still at a 22 year high of about 5.4% as a key interest rate. So clearly what's going on in the market for purchasing and what people are spending doesn't necessarily totally align with the interest rates and what the banks are still charging people. So things are not getting better anytime soon. And on Honestly, the delinquency rate continues to climb. People continue to lose their vehicles. People continually have to find bridges to live under and live in tents and sadly double bunk and ride car share. And people just don't have the money that they once had. And it's a doom and gloom. But unfortunately, the manufacturers aren't helping the cause because we're seeing even car brands like the Rams and the Dodge and the Stellantis still continually to rise their prices on their trucks. They're also increasing costs on some of their new Jeeps. We're seeing Ford as well, continually putting a lot of investments in hybrids and rising prices on their full-size trucks, as well as they do plan to continue the development of some of their EV market space. And as well, GMs have never been cheap. So you're buying a Toyota, you're buying a Chevy, you're buying even any Stellantis product, you're going to pay more money than you've ever paid. And unfortunately, it's also at a higher interest rate. And with all that said, be sure to check out that video. Why are people starting to dump their vehicles, get rid of that debt, and they're deciding to take the bus, ride a bike, whatever it is. Hope to see each and every one on the next one. We'll catch you all real soon. Bye-bye.